Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of the Blocking Plaza, talking about the Oscars. I wish I could say more. Here's another one of those instances in which I can join. Uh, the human population to, uh, you know, I'm joining the club of the haters of COVID-19 because COVID-19 took a lot of people from their cherished stuff. It took, it took away jobs. It took away people's money. It took away families. In my case, in this case at least, it took away the fun of my guilty pleasure of watching the Oscars. Uh, yeah, I know that everything can be a farce on the Oscars. I know that it, it, all the, you know, many of the, many of the winners are probably bought. But still it is a ceremony that somehow I kind of find some fun into it, even in, in the, uh, even in the worst aspect. And man, that because of, because of COVID-19, they decided to, not only uh, not only to uh, to delay the Oscars until uh, until the date of April, which is supposed to be at um, February, and in all the other cases, this time that they wanted to go in what I consider probably the most cheapest, the most rush, and kind of like the most mediocre uh, Oscar event I have ever seen. And yes, I understand that they wanted to, uh, I understand that they wanted to, how can I say, to make it as safe as possible since we are still in the age of pandemic. I know that actors still need to have, uh, have, have to do their ends meet. I am, I'm aware of a lot of things. But one thing that apparently the, the organizer of the event, they didn't, uh, they didn't do enough is that we still live on an age of technology where we can do things kind of like in a way entertain entertainment entertaining for for the masses but instead we got an event that this time took place in the in the in the los angeles union station instead of the usual kodak theater um, and also, well, they'd say that they, they, they try to emulate the old school Oscars, but that sometimes that's way beyond, you know, our, our generation. Our generation kind of, uh, kind of deserves that kind of like a more entertainment moment, uh, moment. Oh my God, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit rushed out. Oh, and before I, before you... Uh, before you kind of begin to question, hey, isn't that your usual room? Well, not exactly. I'm here at on a relative uh, house, uh, this because that relative has a kind of like a better TV than than mine, and I decided to to go there to watch the Oscars. We kind of had this deal out of it, and once per year, I, I I can go to spend the night to see the Oscars, and thank goodness she accompanied me during. during uh, during that, uh, during that event, also, I, I thank goodness that I found out a partner to talk uh, uh, via Facebook, because otherwise this uh, this could have been a really boring and, and mediocre event. And by the way, like always, I have to I took notes of some of the highlights of, of the Oscar and some of my opinion of then some of the nominees, the winners, and all these things. Oh yeah, and unlike other years, this time I made a ballot. I fill in the ballot, and although most of them are pretty much guess, the guesses. But lo and behold, a lot of those guesses, I kind of nail it. It's kind of like, I nail, I think like 11 of them. It's the first time in my life that I guess most of it. Although, well, I did have a little bit of help because some of the, because this is a ballot in which it, they weekly 
Entertainment Weekly, they bold some of, some of the nominees. I know that is kind of cheating, but still, I criticize these, this idiot to boldest. So, not cool, guys, not cool. So anyway, let, like I started to talk about my notes on what, of what I thought about, uh, about the Oscar. Since I already told you my initial, uh, my initial, uh, uh, what was it? My initial highlight of the of the whole scene. I mean, everything looked fine. It kind of looked like a restaurant. Uh, the Union you know, Union Station looked like a restaurant and a bar. And the funny thing is that I never like I like always. I don't care about the red carpet. So we went to the show. Regina King appears, and right on the get go, she starts the show. And it was like, wait a minute, are we starting? Because she started out by, uh, she started out, you know, saying saying hi to everyone, kind of say that yeah, because of the COVID, because of that, she everybody has doesn't have a mask. Except you're gonna notice that you did notice probably a few people with mask. But anyway, you know, Hollywood they think that they're better than us. No offense, just in case. Um, okay, she. Everyone follows the protocols, and she started out saying the original, uh, the nominees for the original screenplay. And I didn't even notice that we just started doing nominations because it began to show the, the nominees that that were that attended the uh, the, the event. And I was like, oh, maybe it's like doing you know like the the usual presentation of some comedy host. Uh, Make uh, roasting some uh, some of the uh, some of the actors or directors, but no, it it just started. And when she, when she said, "And the winner of and the winner of original screenplay is," and I was like, "Wait, wait, 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 what? Right now? I didn't even see a cue that it started. And you know why that happened? Because no clips, not a single clip of the of." of the movie nominees and at this point I was like oh my god are we gonna do this during the whole show in which they're gonna show us the people but they don't show us the clips of the uh, of the movies why why I mean some people haven't even seen those movies we need at least two uh, a sample, a sample to, for us to believe that maybe, maybe for these uh, in a few moments, we uh, we can tell if the if that movie kind of deserve it. But no, no clips, nothing, nada. And and I know that you can do that. So anyway, huh? Best original screenplay goes to Promising Young Woman. I haven't even I haven't even seen the movie, by the way. Actually most of them I haven't even seen. From what I heard it's about this is about this woman on a murder on a murder mystery trying to solve the case of a friend who was killed by a rapist. But still, I was a little bit unfamilded. I was because looking at the whole sets and all these things, I was like, okay. Maybe it's gonna be a little bit more humble, a little bit more simple. Boy, that I was almost almost wrong with that. But continuing on, then I realized that there was no or there's no orchestra this year, no orchestra to to bring out the epicness or the gallant or the gallant feeling of being on the Oscars. No, this time. Uh, this time they got the, a DJ doing all the music and all all the and all and all the you know the the musical cues. It kind of and again it makes it feel cheap considering that Hollywood is one of those people that they they go kind of like far and beyond to to make it look regal. There is a charm into it, even though even though there is kind of like a pompousness out of it. Okay, continuing on, uh, then we got Adapted Screenplay. The winner is one called, uh, uh, from a, the one 
from the movie called The Father. Um, and yeah, this time, in, in this case, we see the uh, uh, we see the winner on camera from somewhere else. I think he was a it was I think it was a French film. I don't remember most most of it, but I do have to say that it was kind of cute when the guy uh, he think his wife and the wife suddenly appears on camera and she gives him a chick on the shoulder, a kiss on the shoulder. Uh, that that's actually kind of cute. Then Laura Dern appears in what the hell was she wearing? It's almost like she was wearing a half of an ostrich on her sh on her skirt. It, her skirt was so fluffy that I'm, I, 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 I am pretty sure that she, I am pretty sure that she basically uh, she basically put an ostrich on her uh, you know on her skirt again. Man, I'm repeating that. She was there to to show uh, the winner for international feature film. And the winner is Another Round from Denmark, which apparently is about uh, about teacher doing going for an, an alcohol spree. Oh, it kind of reminds me of the Tiny Toon Adventures one beer. <laughs> okay, maybe the movie was a little bit serious because it got a little bit touching when when the guy uh, technically he says that he lost a daughter on a on a on a text text and driving incident. Uh, I didn't hear if she was the one driving or it was an idiot who was who was texting while driving. But still, the guy almost drops it that tear, which which um, which honestly that gave me a little bit of a kind of like an empathy to the, to the poor poor man. Then we got the winner for best supporting actor in, 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 in uh, best supporting actor. This one, uh, the winner was Dan Daniel Kaluuya from Judas and the Black Messiah. I mean, uh, honestly, I do remember that I wanted to watch this film out of curiosity, but I didn't give myself the time. Um, I was I was a little bit more of a cheap on a on a moment in which I was being a cheapskate. Um, still, people told me that he that he's doing a great uh, great job in that movie. Then we got a sneak peek of an upcoming Steven Spielberg movie that is coming on December, which is West Side Story. I mean, I am a little bit into it. Maybe it's gonna be a musical, but hey, uh, it's Steven Spielberg. Um, the guy can uh, the guy barely do ba bad movies. Okay, next. The next is that we got best makeup and hair styling. The winner is is from the movie Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. The funny thing is that I I thought that this was gonna be a pimp movie considering the title, but then I investigated the uh, the, uh, the movie and it wasn't. It wasn't that. And then, well, the the people who accepted the award actually said something that I actually kind of agree, because a lot of when at this time and age, uh, Hollywood is always kind of uh, how can I say bragging a lot about we're being diverse, we're being uh, we're making diversity to everybody, giving them opportunity to chances and all these things, while a bold and while bold and honorable goal it gets a little bit tiring to the point that its preachiness gets really annoying and unfortunately it it can also affect negatively to uh, to other people but uh, i like what the what the uh, that one of, one of the women said in which she's hoping that all these scenes saying that we're not uh, that you know being kind of like an, a person in color it's not that it's not groundbreaking or anything. She's hoping that it's gonna become normal, and I was like, "Thank you." I was trying to say this a lot of times, in which I'm sick when Hollywood kind of say that, "Oh, look, she's kind of like the first woman in color to win this," or he, she's gonna be the first one cut color about this. And I, I mean that, yeah, I know, but yeah, it's, it it sounds good and everything, but don't you think that? 
don't you think that it it will sound better if you kind of ignore that she's a is, she's a color and that she's a woman? It's just normal. Just play it out like it is normal. Um, it, I know that is I know that identification is kind of like a highlight of us. So we are proud of that. I'm a proud to, I'm a proud Latino. But sometimes when you kind of show it off or something like that, it feels more like a, a vanity pre bragging project, and it, it's annoying. It gets annoying. No offense to uh, to everything, but to other people, just in case. And continuing on, we got the costume design. And by the way, still not showing us samples. No samples of of uh, of what we of the nominees to make us agree or disagree. And by the way, then the costume design winner is Ma Rainey's Black Bottom again. At least I am happy that we did that because in this one, Mulan was nominated for some reason because their costumes suck. But still, since it didn't win, it's a victory. But curious enough, uh, the, the one who got nominated, the, the one who won, they didn't show up to make a speech or a video speech or whatever. It kind of just nothing else. Got cut the commercials. Okay, then we got um, a humanitarian award for Gene Herschel for uh, for for his work during you know that uh, you know the COVID thing. I kind of didn't understand much about it. I I kind of lost my I kind of lost my attention to that. Then we got. Uh, the director of Parasite presenting uh, the winner of Best Director. Very early, by the way, very early. This guy speaks in Korea, uh, Korea completely, so much that in his video he has to... He needed an interpreter for the Amer American audiences. But anyway, the winner, the winner is Chloe Zhao that was from Nomadland. This is remember that I've been talking about you know the the bragging about you know first people first first woman first first woman on this color and all these things. Well, here's the thing: I knew she was gonna win mostly because she was heavily promoted. That she is the first the first, the first person on the first foreign person in color to to win best director or something like that. I remember that when I saw that in the news, I was like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but wouldn't you just, just be happy that she's gonna win? Nothing else? What's this about, you know, treating people like normal? T treating like, well, this is some, just normal. People technically are, tend to be really impressed by almost everything. Next time you're gonna, next time people are gonna make a huge deal because the winner of an award was is going to be um let's say a toothbrush hey people this is gonna be the the first toothbrush to win an academy award okay i'm exaggerating um no offense to anyone it just it, it just like again it's just it, i'm just exaggerating for the point of how how this kind of tends to be a little bit annoying on on their on their pompous level Okay, then we got the winner for Best Sound. The winner is coincidentally a movie called Sound of Metal. <laughs> when you have sound on the title... <laughs> oh my god, you know what, I'll leave it like that. Best Live Action Short is, is one called Two Distant Strangers. Um, nothing, nothing... I didn't because there's no clips. I don't even know what the what what the short the short live action movies are are about. Here's the thing, guys. Now it's time for me to tell you that when you show no clips of movies or products that we don't even know it even existed, how can we get invested? That's a big chance to expose even 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 material that we don't even know that it exists, and you blew it. 
But uh, one curious thing about about that is that is that a, one, a partner kind of begins to say that every day. Uh, one of the actors kind of say that every day the police will kill three people, and and my partner is like, "Oh, shut up." I'm not gonna go into details, by the way. This is a little bit too uh, too much of a heavy subject. Oh, then here comes kind of like my favorite moment, which is the best animated short of the. I want to complain, but I knew that it was gonna happen. Best animated short. The winner was a Netflix uh, short that is called "If Anything Happens, I Love You." Um. Yeah, let me give you a small review because I saw it today. I saw it today on Netflix, and honestly, considering the art style that is not CGI, it it, it looks it's it's still digitally drawn and everything, but it has a good art style, and um, it's actually really good. Even though the message can get a little, it didn't get preachy. That I understand. It's about this. It's about this couple who had to deal with a uh, a. Uh, uh, they had to deal with the loss of their daughter, who who was shot uh, during a school shooting. One thing that I like about that short is that it didn't. It, it, it well, I was actually afraid that it was gonna be one of those anti-gun messages, but it didn't. It didn't do that. It did. It uh, the shooting actually comes up uh, almost at the end. And by the way, I'm not trying to spoil you because. The Netflix notification spoils you at right at the beginning of the mo of the short, uh, but still it had kind of like a nice message and nice visuals, and it's powerful enough. And again, it's not preachy; it's no anti-gun message, and I'm glad. I'm glad that it that happened. On the other hand, what? Well, no surprise that the winner is Soul because. Disney sucks the soul out of people. Look, I don't hate soul, but I think Wolf Walkers was better. Better in the message, better in the heart, better in the effort. I, Wolf Walkers is actually my winner, the real winner of, of best anime, animated, animated uh, movie of, the, of that year. So, you know what? Here's your Oscar, my... My handmade Oscar. Soul, I'm not again. I'm not saying that it was a bad movie, but I seen better message about the meaning of life. If you want to know a, a message of, about the meaning of life, watch the Osamu Tezuka films or read his work, most notably The Phoenix or Buddha, or even even Kimba the White Lion or Jungle Taite. This one has better message about existentialism. Because one thing that I think that that lack, um, uh, how can I say, um, on soul, is is a little bit of a message about people dealing, you know, with kind of like harsher death, death. And uh, maybe it's the maybe it's the ending. I even thought I think that the ending was uh, was good, but I found that something was missing. I'm not I'm not denying that it's a good it's a good movie. But I feel it a little bit forgettable. Or you know what? Now that I think about it, considering the style, the the jazz, the all the elements that this movie has, I actually encourage you to watch this uh, the gameplay of this video game called Dreams. It is basically kind of like a build your own game game, but there's a story mode called Art Dream. That one is really really similar to Soul. But it's much more memorable because it has a better jazzy music and and a better theme. Not exactly about the meaning of life, but it's more about a redemption arc. Okay. Oh, and by the way, after after that ended, I don't know what came into the DJ's mind, but he just he just he just relentlessly made an air horn sound. I go. Rrr, 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 rrr. God, that, God, that, uh, let me tell you, this sound is getting old. Okay, now, then we got short documentary film. Uh, this one, I, again, no clips. It, 
And the winner is Colette. I didn't even get what the people were saying. Was it about Hong Kong protesters? I'm not, I didn't even check what it's going to be about. But one thing that, that I noticed is, I think, electronic art. Ah, yeah. Thanks, Electronic Arts, for for your microtransactions in gaming. Continuing on. Best documentary feature. I'm actually surprised that the winner wasn't a war, a film about war, or a film about uh, some racial, uh, some racial exposure, or some. Are uh, mostly most of the most of the. the, the most of the winners are usually about people uh, with mental illness or people or, or directed to music. Rarely you get a uh, one that wins uh, uh, something related to the uh, to zoology, the study about animals. The winner is called My Octopus Teacher. It it I mean it's a shame that they didn't even bring the octopus to receive the Oscars. But seeing the, uh, at least that one has, has clips, by the way. That one has clips. I don't know why the other one didn't have it. But either way, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, I did, I do remember that I, I joke uh, uh, on Facebook saying that, all right, had a tentacle hentai for the win. <laughs> I'm a joke. I was joking, just joking. All right, um, then we got Steven Young presenting best visual effects. And the winner is Tenet. My, my commentary, it's a Christopher Nolan film. It's obvious that they're gonna give it an award. I haven't seen the movie. I hear people saying that it's disappointing at best. But honestly, I, I wasn't even sure because I'm one of the few people in the world that actually hate uh, Inception. So a person, a person that hates Inception, obviously, is not gonna be attracted to, you know, to Tenet. And don't get me wrong, I like Christopher Nolan. Also, even though I think that Christopher Nolan is is a little bit pretentious, I don't like Inter. I like Dark Knight, The Dark Knight. I don't like Interstellar, but I really, really like Dunkirk. That'll give you a little bit of a hint about this guy. Then Brad Pitt presented the best supporting actress, and the winner is Young. Uh, yeah, I, excuse me, I don't pronounce it well. Young Young Hyun, uh, Korean actress from Minari. That one, uh, it was kind of like a good lucky guess for me. Then Halle Berry presents. Uh, Production design and cinematography, both in which the winner is Mank. I heard. I also heard some about this movie. I heard about uh, about the development that the movie is about the development of Citizen Kane. I wish that again shows up more clips or samples about this one. And then we got a sneak peek of this movie that I ain't seen tra a lot of trailers. Which is none other than in the Heights. To be fair, for a musical, it looks really, really ambitious. Even more ambitious than all the High School Musical uh, films I have. I have well noticed. I haven't seen the movies, but you know how High School Musical was a phenomenon during during the during the two thousands, as far as I can remember. What else there is? Um, then Harrison Ford, the grumpiest actor in the world, he presents film editing. And boy, that he looks really tired. Every time I see him on screen, I am figuring that his, his hair is going to drop like a, like a wilted flower. But anyway, in film editing, the winner is Sound of Metal. I can't say because they don't show us. Then Viola Davis presents the Humanitarian Award for uh, for Tyler Perry. Honestly, I'm not exactly a big, uh, kind of like a big, uh, big guy into Tyler Perry. I I know Medea, but I never seen a Medea movie. I know that there are other Tyler Perry movies, but I never seen any Tyler Perry movies. Some of them, uh, uh, they say that this guy is really, really cheap. 
But apparently it says that this guy is a, is a humanitarian that uh, uh, that understands people or something like that. I gotta go... I gotta... I gotta learn a little bit more about this guy. But either way, his, his speech is probably one of the best uh, uh, on the on the Oscars. He he kind of begins to say that we should not hate, he, uh, he doesn't hate anybody. Uh, Ball ban, maybe I'm gonna, maybe he won a little bit of respect on me. And, next, and maybe when he comes back to make Medea movies, he, maybe he creates better ones. Yeah, I can't wait for um, Medea's charity house. Okay, and then best score, the best score, best musical score, just in case, is Soul. And here's the funny thing. The the guys who who, who received the award, he, he just began to say about about music is about about the first 12 notes we all gonna the 12 the first 12 notes should be rem, we all have to remember or something like that and we, and we have to we have to learn about our exist, existential the meaning of life and everything but in my head it was like dude i barely remember your first 12 notes so why do you why do you got this award? Look, I'll give you a, a, a I'll give you a, a few a few notes that you can that you will remember right on the get go. Here. I'll do it again. Okay, I'm not gonna whistle. I'm gonna go like this. Bam 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 bam. Again. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Six, probably six notes or seven notes. I kind of stumbled on one, but still, do you remember that? Do you remember that one? Yeah, a very memorable song needs less than twelve notes, and Soul doesn't. I don't. I barely remember those those notes. Maybe because I haven't. I only saw the movie once. But still, even um, a movie that you see it once, you remember so, something. I remember Zootopia's music, uh, uh, for, uh, for heaven's sake. Then we got the best song. The winner is Hear My Voice from The Trial of the Chicago 7. That one I got a lucky guess on my, uh, on my ballot. Mostly because I, I had in my mind that if you have a title that sounds a little bit political, it's gonna attract people. Well, yeah, sometimes the title means uh, means it. At least they, we got some samples, and and I do I do hear the beat. But I wish I could hear the the music properly. I heard that it was shown during the red carpet, but I didn't want it to see it on the red carpet. I wanted to see it on the Oscar event. Then they, apparently they decided to take a break by having celebrities playing trivia games. We got a sneak peek of the DJ from, for, of all people. The DJ, he, he is going to direct his first movie, The Summer of Soul. <laughs> that one actually kind of kind of had the shortest sneak peek I have seen because it, it only lasted like, what was it, 20 seconds compared to the, uh, to the other two. Uh, what was it? That uh, the, the the Steven Spiel the Steven Spielberg and uh, you know what I I began to forget again. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna in the height, the in the uh, the in the height and the West Side Story. They got kind of like two minutes of sneak peek. Well, this one it only lasted like what was it twenty seconds. So, so that, that wasn't fair. And then we got of course in memoriam where we see. Uh, how we lost people, like, like, uh, uh, what was it, Ch I guess it escaped the name, uh, Chadwick Boseman, you know, uh, you know, Black Panther, uh, I did see Christopher Plummer, I, um, I, I've seen an animator that I, I barely remember the name, um, a lot of factors that I do remember, um, oh yeah, Sean Connery was also there, but here's my issue with the memorial. It was the 
fastest memorial I have ever seen. So it went so fast that some of those actually it was just there for almost a millisecond. It gave us it didn't even give us enough room to see, okay, what this guy did, what this guy done. Was he an animator? Oh, wait, 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 no, stop, 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 slow down. You know this, you know that we usually say that when we respect our, uh, the people who have deceased, we give them a minute of silence. Apparently they told them, no, it's not a minute of silence, it's a minute of screen time. So in memoriam, let's just keep it to almost less than a minute. So, well, how many, how many died? Uh, don't care. We got lots of them. We just cram it up in, in, in two minutes and then, shh, oh my God. I, 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 I don't know if that was disrespectful, but dang, that it, man, that it was, uh, that I don't, I don't know how to feel. I, I don't feel it, it, it. Was that disrespectful? Give me your comments, just in case. And then something weird happened. They decided to go with best picture. Best picture. Best picture. We still haven't get got the best actor and the best actress. Normally, best picture is left for last. And lo and behold, the winner is Nomadland. Everyone say thank you. Everyone, I'm like, kind of like the night is closing. And I was like, and even Frances McDormand goes, oh. And then, yep. Uh, and yep, I remember that my partner put on, um, on Facebook that, yeah, yep. Well, that's technically normal, more normal. And I felt like, dude. We haven't seen the best actor and best actor. And I was like, wait, 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 what? Yeah. The actors were left, left to, uh, uh, the actors were left for last. Well, best leading actress, Frances McDormand for Nomadland. And the best actor is Anthony Hop Hopkins from The Father. Technically, Anthony Hopkins beat the, uh, 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 chat, uh, again, it escapes me. Chat with both men from, uh, uh, you know, the Post Hom, uh, Award. <laughs> I know. Uh, even even my partner says that now they should be ready for the the they should be ready for the pitches the the torches and the and the pitchforks from Wakanda. But, but well, Anthony Hopkins is not there. I know maybe because he is he is very old now and it's gonna be very risky. But either way, that was a really really mediocre. Uh, uh, that was really mediocre, by the way. I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but on further analysis, I am beginning to have a little bit of a better appreciation to. Seth MacFarlane's Oscar because while Seth MacFarlane's Oscar was really shameful, I didn't, I hated it. I, I was really of poor taste considering that it's one of the worst Oscars I have seen in my life. I cannot, what can I say about this? Again, it had, it, I know that it wanted to be resourceful and limited to all the, uh, because of the COVID restrictions. I get that. I really get that. But what I don't get is what's so hard on showing us clips and samples of your nominees. Or at least, here's something that you could have done when it's about the, the songs. Instead of, we don't need it, we don't need it to, you know, to be on stage. Which you have done, they could have done it, you know, on the on the comfort on, of their house. Making that person sing or making kind of like the video out of it. That kind of show that you have ambition to, uh, to your craft. But no. It, uh, it, the limitations, I get it. The cheapness, I get it. But instead, apparently... 
watching samples is 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 too expensive for you. It's almost like the whole thing was host was hosted by Mr. Krabs from SpongeBob. So that's all I have to say about this year's Oscars. The most mediocre excuse of, of an Oscar event I have seen. And honestly, I don't think I don't think there is a vaccination for that.